to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 436 of the podcast, uh, Take Two. We tried it last week. We had some sound issues. Now we are back. And ready to go. Yes. Very excited for this episode. We're going to be talking about professional wrestling and serial killers and the Geico Cavemen. Yes. Okay. And the Statler Brothers. I, I, I and... heard something recently about the Geico Caveman, and I don't remember what it is, but it was cool. Okay. Okay, uh, Bunny, uh, before we start, you know, we're, you and I are close, you know? Yes. We're, we're, we're very good friends. We, we, we know each other really well. What, what I'm trying to say is, if you were an alien gorilla. Yes. You would tell me, right? Depends You're... on the oath I had to give to my my simian overlords. Okay. It, there was a bit of silence before you decided to answer, which makes me a bit nervous. Yeah, it's a big yikes, isn't it? It's a yikes. That's okay. That's yeah. Mal says that's a big red flag. <laughs> big red flag. But that's okay. Uh, very. Ex- I haven't. I haven't gotten the most sleep. Uh, N- Natasha and I stayed up until like three thirty in the morning, just yeah, enjoying each other's company. And and uh, uh, you know, we're we're really we're awesome. Yeah. So I'm a little I'm a little bit tired, but thankfully I wrote all of this last week. So I'll just be. So that's good. Buddy. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I, I can't be that loud. Amber's working from home today from 12 to 6. Oh. So, way to ruin the podcast. But I do, I'm, this is the first time that I've ever, I'm ever doing this podcast from my iPhone. So, maybe if this podcast behaves, maybe later we could do the podcast outside. Possibly. So, yes. so that's that's a possibility. So let's just behave and do the show. Bunny. Yes. I want to talk about professional wrestling for a while here at the top of the show because the world of professional wrestling has undergone a seismic transformation lately. The main story is Vince McMahon is out at the WWE and his daughter Stephanie is now co-CEO. Yes. With with Nick Khan, the man primarily responsible for the intense layoffs in WWE over the past few years, the, the man primarily believed to be responsible for the intense layoffs in WWE over the past few years. Uh, not to be confused with AEW president Tony Khan. Okay. So there's two Khans. There's there two there are a lot of cons in wrestling. There always have been. Yeah, yeah. And Stephanie, as the co-CEO, has put her husband, Triple H, in charge of creative, which has actually gotten a lot of laugh, laps wrestling fans excited for wrestling again. Really? Yeah. A lot of people who have just uh, sort of been professional WWE haters for a very long time are, are suddenly saying, oh, well, Triple H is now, you know, the head of creative and the head of storylines. And so, hey, maybe storylines will actually make sense. Maybe I should watch again. And so the ratings are going up a little bit. Uh, fun fact, since the 1980s, the majority of creative, the, the writing, who gets pushed, who gets buried, all of that went through the hands of a 76-year-old out-of-touch billionaire and, as we now know, executive sexual harasser. Yes. 
yes. whose wife whose wife was a legit member of the Trump administration. Go figure. Yeah. So when female wrestlers were being forced to have brawn panty matches and crawl on all fours in the middle of a ring like a dog, oh, Vince McMahon. When Kurt Angle became sexually obsessed with Booker T's wife and compared her to an animal, Trump supporter Vincent K. McMahon. Yes. When the Black Lives Matter protests were happening and suddenly the WWE debuted a faction called Retribution, they were young wrestlers dressed all in black who would show up, break equipment, set things on fire, property damage. Their gimmick was they were destroying the WWE as a form of protest because according to Wikipedia, quote, perceived unfair treatment. Oh, did a 70-something sexual abusing billionaire Republican with ties to the Trump administration debut a Black Lives Matter mocking wrestling faction in the wake of the George Floyd protests? So now that Vince McMahon is out of WWE, the, the belief is that, hey, things might actually not suck. I, I don't know. I just kind of picture this more like... Oh, I don't know. We'll have, you know, Randy Orton fight Rey Mysterio, winner Triple H. Uh, we'll have Kurt Angle wrestling. I, I have no idea anymore. Uh, name a wrestler. Um, See, it's hard when the pressure is on. Haystacks Calhoun. Haystacks Calhoun, winner. Triple H. That's yeah. kind of how I picture it going. Yeah, that's always been my fear. But basically, anyone being head of creative that's not uh, an out of touch billionaire has to be an improvement, you know? Yeah, that's the way that I see it. So yeah, this is this is universally being seen as, hey, maybe things will stop sucking ass now. I've come close to actually but, but still, watching an you know, episode or two recently. Can hiring his son-in-law really be that much better? Uh, well, see, he was in charge of. I mean, we're talking about the... we're talking about what you're saying here is that you feel better if Jared Kushner is taking care of it. Yeah, but he, here's the thing, is that Triple H was in charge of the secondary brand, NXT, and he, and uh, NXT was great. And so people are seeing, you know, Raw and SmackDown now as being, well, if it's even like half as good as NXT was, then that can only be a positive, oh, you know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, Max, I'm doing the podcast from my phone today. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, if the podcast is good, we might do podcast outside later. So I can do that because I'm on my phone. I was spending the night at Jaden's. You good? Yeah. Yeah? I you... mean, I need to get my fingernail off. Or my fingernail off. Or uh, part of your fingernail got ripped off? Well, you never uh, cut. Uh, your fingernails never get cut, and so you've got Wolverine claws. And s s having long fingernails can be awesome, but also that means that they sometimes snap off. Yeah, so that's that's a negative part of that. So yeah, I it, I've hated the WWE for a very long time, as anyone who has heard this podcast before knows, and even I have thought of watching uh an episode or two lately so you know how many times have we shit on the wwe on this podcast you know often often yeah so just the fact that like oh my god vince mcmahon is out that uh and uh, another thing that makes a triple h run a triple h run 
WWE so enticing is, you know, it's the small things. Like Vince McMahon had a well-known hard-on for big buff dudes. Yes. You know, six foot eight, six foot ten, three hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, tall buff wrestlers, and a lot of times it didn't even matter if they could wrestle or talk on a mic or have charisma as long as they were just buff and really tall. You know? The Great Khali, Nathan Jones, uh, Amos, the Masterpiece Chris Masters, Giant Gonzalez, Giant Silva, Ezekiel Jackson, Hulk Hogan, for Christ's sake. Yeah. What's the most complicated move he ever did? A leg drop. So, Vince McMahon hated putting Daniel Bryan over because despite being a massive fan favorite, he was like five foot ten. And that was a Vince McMahon no-no. Oh, man. And, and, and that's that was really sad. That like, oh, I'm going to force you to be in a comedy tag team to bury you because you were getting too popular. But back in the back in the like late eighties, early nineties, wasn't Vince McMahon also accused of like sexual harassment of the male wrestlers as well? Yes, yes, that's something that people nowadays, uh, I think, have forgotten. But yeah, that was always the the rumor was that you did things for Vince McMahon to get yourself pushed yeah in the wwe was always the rumor that i had heard so now with someone else in charge maybe normal sized people will get a push for once like ricochet well i think it had hey. come out i think it had come out when the when when the organization was being investigated for steroids or some shit like that steroids yep Vince McMahon has because I remember uh, th there was an actual court case, yeah, and the sexual harassment wasn't really like it wasn't about that, but it like kind of came up at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe normal sized people will get like a push for once, like Ricochet, aka Lucha Underground. Prince Puma. Yes. He's one of the he's one of the best wrestlers out there in the WWE have just been sitting on him and I think that that's a crime yeah. because he's an incredible wrestler. Ah, uh, but he's a short incredible wrestler. So we're not giving him a push. And so it uh so it, it the the general consensus is that uh good times are ahead for the WWE, but ultimately though Vince McMahon leaving the WWE, well I will I believe in the long run, really spell bad news for AEW, <coughs> All Elite Wrestling, the WWE's main competition, because they have been gaining one of the footholds that AEW has had is that they have been gaining new wrestlers who are fleeing the toxicity of the WWE. And the rumor mill is now saying that a well, lot of AEW and again, that's the same thing that happened with the WCW. Yep. And how they got a lot of the wrestlers off of WWE. Yeah. But now that the now that the toxicity of the WWE is getting better because the 76-year-old out of touch billionaire and an executive sexual harasser whose wife was a legitimate member of the Trump administration. Now that he's gone, the rumor mill is saying a lot of AEW talent kind of want to go back to WWE now. And that could really spell danger for AEW in the long run, you know? Yeah. And that's a shame. There's also the very sad but true fact that AEW's ratings are really low right now. They're not doing the best ratings. And so... Weren't they, weren't they I, kicking ass? Like, the last time we talked about it, I thought they were doing really well. They were. They were. But the difficult part is that AEW is on TNT, and so a lot of times AEW just keeps getting pushed aside for the NBA, for 
this other sporting thing for this important thing that's happening. So a lot of times AEW gets moved to like, oh, AEW uh, is on a Monday this week. Oh, a and AEW is on a Thursday this week. So it's kind of getting bumped around, and I don't think that that's been helping in the ratings. Yeah. Personally, <clears throat> I feel like what AEW should do to separate itself from the WWE is to really push their homegrown stars because they have a lot of wrestlers that are pretty big that they created yeah. that the competition doesn't have. Like Orange Cassidy who we've discussed on this podcast before. He's the one who does yes. the flurry of kicks and wrestles most of the time with his hands in his pockets. I love Orange Cassidy. Uh, there's Hook. I really like him. He's kind of like a, like a small, younger Goldberg. He barely talks. He just shows up. He kicks ass. He wins a match. He leaves. I freaking love Hook. Uh, Darby Allen. He's kind of like a like a like a like a alt skater Jeff Hardy. Dan Hogan. Dan uh, um, He's a really you know, I, yeah. Jungle Boy. I really like Jungle Boy, and of course Danhausen, whom we love in this family. Danhausen is amazing, and ah, uh, he he has a place in my heart. Basically. Dan Housen is a professional wrestler version of the silly bad guy in a kid's cartoon. It, like, he's Dr. Doofenshmirtz from Phineas and Ferb. And he shows up, Hello, I am Dan Housen, and I curse you! And it, 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 I, I freaking love him so much. I tweeted about him yesterday and he liked my tweet. This yeah. is the first this is the first professional wrestler to like a tweet of mine since Marty the Moth Martinez. Oh no, Marty the like, Moth. Like the Lucha Underground tweet that I did. So I'm happy with that. But with the ratings. As long now, as that's eight, as far as it went. <laughs> yeah, that's as far as it went. But with the ratings down, AEW is leaning heavily on the well-known names that they have. So, okay, so you turn on AEW, and instead of pushing the uh, original talent they have, you see Chris Jericho and CM Punk and Christian and John Moxley and FTR. And, and it, it, that, it, so it worries me that AEW will just shrink into another TNA, and that sucks. Yeah, but it, it it is exciting times for the world of professional wrestling. Uh, there were it, it, I, a week or two ago, uh, Donald Trump made his way into the Vince McMahon drama. Okay. Let oh yes, yes, I yes, can. yes. Yeah, because uh, Donald Trump was. Uh, in the main event of one of the WrestleManias, and then he showed up again. And so Vince, Vince, the WWE paid Donald Trump, but then the WWE made, with finger quotes, a charitable donation to yes. the Trump Foundation, which was their way of paying Trump but getting a tax break because, oh, look at us donating money to an organization. Give us a tax write-off. And then Trump accepted that money and put it in his pocket as a way of saying, ha ha, this will get taxed less than if I just get a paying day. Yeah. So there's a possibility that might be illegal. I don't know. I'm just ha happy to have finally seen a horrible person like Vince McMahon get taken down a peg. Yes. Because he oh, deserves God, yes. it. He absolutely deserves it. And so uh, proud I am of all of that. Uh, so that's really it for uh, professional wrestling. I, I, might, I might actually like catch a Raw or a SmackDown. Oh, is everything okay? Yeah, Jeannie's just not feeling well. 
Oh my god, does she have the Rona? Uh, no, not this time. Okay. Fired. Oh no! Oh, those SOBs. Man, Bunny's going to have to sell himself again. Again, yeah. Bunny hit those streets. You just take what your so mama So if you'd like to, to support the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drop me a DM. So, so that's it for uh, the opening. I just wanted to talk about the WWE. It's really exciting what's going on. Yeah. If you want, if you want, Bunny, we can transition into one of our uh, most beloved segments, Running the Clock. Running the Clock. That, that sounds like a good plan. 